In this lesson, we are learning about meiosis. We are going to look at meiosis from a number of different perspectives, but specifically looking at the stages of it today. We've been discussing how genetic material is passed onto new cells through mitosis, but it's important to consider the type of reproduction an organism participates in when considering how its DNA is going to be passed onto the new offspring in the new generation. We know that asexual sorry, reproduction only requires one parent, but it means that the genetic information is going to be identical in that new offspring. So in sexual reproduction, there are going to be two parents and therefore two sources of genetic information. And this requires gametes or sex cells to combine at fertilization and it will create an offspring with a unique combination of genetic information. In our bodies, our cells specialize their structure to match their function. And the vast majority of our cells do this with all of the genetic information present, whether they access all the information or not. And these are called somatic cells. But the function of our gametes or sex cells or germ cells is to combine with other gametes to form a new offspring. The problem is that they have only or they need to have only half the genetic information. If they had all of the genetic information in a somatic cell, they would have too much once they combined. So meiosis is the process that creates gametes with only half the full complement of genetic material. And we call these cells haploid as opposed to diploid. So this is a diploid cell. It's got one of each pair of chromosomes, but this is a haploid gamete. If we discuss humans specifically, our diploid somatic cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and these pairs are known as homologous chromosomes. They have the same sequence of genes on them in the same order. However, the only difference is that one of them is inherited paternally from the father and one is inherited maternally from the mother. So we're talking from the sperm or from the egg. Now, in, this is kind of like a same, same, but different situation. We've got the same genes, but the information is going to be slightly different. It's going to determine the same physical characteristic, but it's usually a different variety. So you think of it like a recipe book. Uh, you've inherited a cake recipe from both mum and dad, but one of them might be chocolate, one of them might be carrot. They're both cakes, but just different varieties. These are the same gene, but slightly different varieties of it. The principle of meiosis relies on the idea that we are passing along only one of these pairs of homologous chromosomes, but it must be one from each pair. Now, meiosis takes one diploid somatic parent cell and creates four haploid daughter cells. All right? In this situation, we've created gametes that are sperm. It occurs only to create gametes and therefore it occurs only in certain organs and tissues in an organism. It's important to know that the stages of meiosis look remarkably similar to the stages of mitosis, but it has a drastically different outcome and function. So the stages are named really similarly, but there are two stages of division. So we'll see that there is prophase one, metaphase one, telophase one, anaphase one, all that kind of thing. And then it goes into the two. By the end of meiosis two, there are four haploid daughter cells, but by the end of meiosis one, there are actually two haploid daughter cells. All right, interphase works essentially the same in the cell cycle as we know uh, in mitosis. The DNA replication will take place in S phase, and so the chromosomes will be in the form of sister chromatids held together at the centromere. At this stage, they're still really long and stringy. They're only just starting to become visible under the microscope. At prophase one, the chromosomes condense and they start to become visible. And we can see in this cell, there are kind of two homologous pairs here. And we can assume that one of each of those pairs is inherited maternally and one is paternally. So at this stage, the nuclear membrane starts to break down and the spindle fibers will come and attach at the centromere. But it's important to know that these are homologous pairs. These are chromosome couples. They are matched up and they hang out together and coil around each other sort of tightly in this intimate fashion. And it's called a bivalent when that happens. It kind of looks like this. We're going to talk more about this later, but bivalent formations are important for mixing and matching genes to create variation. All right, in metaphase one, together the bivalents hand in hand, they're intertwined and they line up across the equator of the cell. There's no rule to which side the paternal or maternal chromosomes go, they just line up together. Then in anaphase one, the spindle fibers attached to the centromeres they, that, are, that are already attached to the centromeres, sorry, they shorten and they draw one of each of the pairs from the bivalent in opposite direction. Now it's really important to note that the bivalent splits. 
not the cystochromatids. Okay, this is not like mitosis in this situation. The cystochromatids are still intact, but there's just one of each pair now moving to the other poles. By telophase one, each new nucleus is forming with one of each of the homologous pairs being dragged to the poles. A new nuclear membrane starts to form around that and the spindle fibers break down and the cell separates in the middle. Interkinesis is just basically cytokinesis. It's happening between meiotic divisions. Um, the same thing is occurring. The cytoplasm is being divided up into two new cells. Uh, there's a really brief interphase between the first and second stage of meiosis, but the difference here is that there's no DNA replication because even though we only have one of each of the homologous pairs, it's already got sister chromatids, right? No DNA replication can happen. All right, so now we move into the second stage of meiosis, and again, we have a prophase, right? This is prophase two. So new spindle fibers form, and the nuclear membrane breaks down. Yes, we did just form the new membrane, but now we're going to break it down again. And the spindle fibers will attach to the centromeres of the chromosome. The chromosomes arrange themselves at the equator, so down the middle of the cell with help from the spindle fibers. It's just that it's happening in two cells this time. In anaphase two, the spindle fibers shorten like usual. This time, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. This is a mitotic-like division, okay? The sister chromatids are being pulled apart to opposite ends of a pole, uh, sorry, opposite poles of the cell. Now, telophase two occurs um, across both of these dividing cells. The nuclear membranes now form around the four new nuclei ready for the final division and the cytoplasm is then split and the cell membrane will close up around the four daughter cells. So this is an overview of all of those stages and you can see there are some similarities to mitosis, mainly in the second meiosis division, um, but there's some really significant differences and you need to know the difference. Uh, we'll revisit some of these stages later when we discuss variation. Now there's lots of depictions of this process, some far more complex than others, but be really clear about the difference in the outcomes by knowing what's occurring at each stage. But importantly, you've got to understand the role that homologous chromosomes play in this.